Hey friend, welcome to Teachers in Real Estate with your host, Jackie Durbin. I have built a six-figure income from using what I learned from being a teacher. Teachers make great agents, but guys, it isn't all sunshine and rainbows. Some people are cutthroat. Some clients will make you want to throw in the towel, but your years in education have built you for a career in real estate, and I am here to help. With the right mindset and the right tribe, you can experience the same success. You can either supplement your income as a part-time agent or go full-time into real estate. The tools I will share will help you gain the confidence and expertise to reach your goals. Whatever your goals are, let's enjoy this time together. This podcast is geared for teachers who are looking to get a start in real estate, but also teachers who are already rocking those dual careers. If that's you, grab your notebook, your pencil, and buckle up. We are about to begin Teachers in Real Estate. Well, hello, guys. I don't know if this is your first time, second time, or maybe, I don't know, maybe you've been binge listening and this is your 56, because guess what? This is episode 56. And in today's episode, I am going to be discussing how to set and achieve extraordinary goals. Notice, have you ever seen how extraordinary, this is the way that I always learned how to spell it, it's extraordinary, okay? When you're creating goals, you don't want to have ordinary goals like, oh, you know, I'd like to sell a couple houses. You want extraordinary, which means, hello, there's an emphasis on the extraordinary. All right. So as a real estate agent, setting and achieving those extraordinary goals can be a great way to boost your success. Now, I am going to preface this episode with the following disclaimer. Are you ready? Real estate and being a successful real estate agent is not simply given to you. I swear that needs to be like a warning label, like when you go to get your real estate license. Now, does that mean that everyone is not equally able to have success? No, that's not what I'm saying. Every single person who gets a real estate license, there's nothing that says like, oh, you did this, so you're not going to be successful. Or, oh, you did this, you're going to be successful. The reason why you will reach success is because of hard work. It's no different than when we talk to our students and we're like, look, you want to increase your score, you want to get a better grade, you're going to have to put in the work, right? You're going to have to study more, maybe do extra credit, whatever it is. It's the same thing with real estate. Now, the reason why so many fail in this industry is because of something that they, it's not something that they did, okay? It's more about what they were not willing to do, okay? Now, Social media, TV shows, all of these things have glamorized the industry. Now, don't get me wrong. There is an infinite income that you can generate as an agent, okay? It's not like other professions where there's like that glass ceiling and you can't go further. You can, I mean, there's real estate agents that like are millionaires, multi-millionaires, all right? Do you think it was easy for them? No. Did they make that money right off the go? I'm going to probably say no, but I don't know. I mean, I'm not a multimillionaire, all right? I haven't gotten that far in my business. However, I still feel like I'm successful. So I'm going to share a few tips to help you get started in setting and achieving these extraordinary goals. Now, notice I said not just setting the goals, but also achieving them, okay? So you got your pencil? You ready? All right, here we go. Number one, and I know you know how to do this because you're teachers, you need to generate and create SMART goals, all right? Now, SMART is a acronym, and this is what it stands for. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So what does that mean? Don't just say, I want to be successful. That's not specific enough. Don't have it where it's hard to know if it, uh, like if you've reached it, right? That's the measurable part to it. So like, I can't just say, oh, I'll make a good salary. Well, what, what is the amount? How will I know that I've reached what I want, right? You also have to make sure it's achievable, okay? Average agents, depending on your market, but most agents in our, in our area in Arizona, in their first year, they close about three to five in a year, okay? Now, the reason why that number is sometimes on the lower end is because maybe they didn't already have people who were like just waiting for them to get licensed. So they had to do some prospecting, right? You know, they had to generate a database. They had to create some clients, you know, and get those. So can people achieve much higher goals? Yeah. You just have to know, like, is this achievable for me? And it's not a one size fits all. You also have to make sure that your goal is relevant. Now, what do I mean by relevant? 
is it important to you? If it's not important to you, who cares? Now, let me say this. One of the goals that I had created for myself at the beginning of 2023 was that I wanted to, um, I wanted to work with, I think I said 20, I think I had 20 clients. I don't know. It was something like that. Okay. It was like 20 or 30 clients. I think it was 30. I said, I wanted to work. I wanted to help 30 clients find a home. Now, can I achieve that goal? Yeah. Can I go ahead and make it measurable? Yeah. It's 30 people. Okay. Um, the last thing was timely, right? You have to give it like a timestamp. This is how long I'm giving myself to do this. Now, all of those things were there, right? It was specific. It was measurable. It was achievable. It was timely, but it wasn't relevant because guess what? That's not really where my passion is. Now, do I like to work with buyers and sellers and helping them find the house? Yeah. It's not that I don't like it. It's just that that's not specifically relevant right now in my life. Right now, what's more relevant and more important to me is helping other agents. So could I create that SMART goal for reaching a certain amount of production? Of course I could. Okay. However, one that I'm going to actually put the work in for is something that's more important to me. Okay. So you have to understand you have to have all five of those things. Now, here's an example, right? Let's say that you're like, you know what? I want to make my, my teacher salary this year in real estate. Okay. All right. So you're going to do that. Now don't just say that though. Okay. To make that income or whatever. Okay. Well, let, let's say that maybe you want to make six figures this year in real estate income. You need to break it down into achievable steps. Consider what do you need to do in order to get there? Okay. Maybe increase your income, maybe reduce your expenses, maybe setting up a budget. Also think about how much you need to make each month. Now I don't like to do it by month. I prefer to do it by quarter, but that's just me. And then how are you going to reach that goal? Where are you going to prospect? How are you going to get people? How many people are already in your pipeline? How many people are already ready to buy? And then how many more people do you need to get to your goal, right? It's like taking on a side hustle or asking for a raise, right? You have to look at ways um, to break it down, which brings us to my second tip. Break it down. Yeah, okay. You need to break down your goals into smaller, more manageable tasks, all right? This will make them easier to accomplish, and it will also help keep you more motivated. Now, you can do this by making monthly goals, okay? However, I prefer quarterly goals, and this is the reason, okay? Let's say that you're like, okay, in January, or, you know, we'll just start in January because that's where the, the year starts, okay? So in January, um, every month this year, I will create, um, you know, I'll open three transactions, okay? Well, if it's January 1 and you're making your goals for the year, guess what? <laughs> Unless you already have them closing, everything that you generate in January is not going to close in January. It would close in February or maybe even March, depending on where you are in January, okay? Um, so you always have to remember you're always a month behind. So what you, what you do in the last quarter of that year is going to provide a harvest. Ooh, that's a good word in quarter one. Okay. So think about it. Like if you're a farmer, all right, I love analogies. I love a good analogy. Okay. So here we go. You're a farmer, right? You're like, okay, I'm going to have um, all of these vegetables to eat. Now, you can't just put the seeds in the ground and then be like, okay, look, I'm back tomorrow. Where's my harvest? Where's all my fruits and veggies? No, it takes time, right? And so you have to keep in mind that whatever you're doing right now, like if you're listening to this um, as the episode's being put out, this is the first quarter of 2023. Everything that I'm doing in that first quarter is going to provide a harvest in the form of an income on my second quarter, okay? So you have to keep in mind that like you're always moving, you're always, you're doing things today to help you tomorrow, okay? So I just want you to be able to make that and keep that in mind. All right, you ready? Number three, third tip. Guys, you got to celebrate success. Now, celebrate each and every victory, no matter how small, okay? And what this does is it helps you stay motivated and reminds you that you're on the right track. Now, some transactions are going to be harder than others, okay? Some of them are going to be really hard. Some clients are going to be easier to please than others. Okay. That just happens. Some prospecting tasks will result in really good results. And then the next day you do the exact same thing and you get no results. Okay. So let's say one of the things that you're going to do is you're like, you know what? I'm going to make 30 calls every day. Okay. So you, you make all your calls and no one answers, or maybe the people do answer and they either hang up on you or they're like, no, I would not work with you. Guess what? You still 
created success and you need to celebrate it. Why did you create success? Because you said, I'm going to make 30 calls today and you actually did that. Okay. What if the transaction, okay, you got something in escrow, right? The transaction falls apart. I'm telling you, you need to celebrate. And you're like, why, Jackie? I just lost money. You need to celebrate because there was a learning that occurred. There was an experience that you had. And now it's going to transform you into a better agent, a better person, someone who now knows, guess what? This can happen. All right. That's happened to me before. I've had transactions fall out. And you know what really sucks? When you count your income, you start counting that commission, and guess what? You haven't earned that commission, in, or, well, I'm not going to say earned. You cannot count that commission until that check is actually in your bank account, all right? So celebrate your success, and don't be hard on yourself, and really don't compare yourself, okay? We are not, we are not all apples, okay? Here we go. Number four, stay focused. Make sure to focus on the task at hand and avoid any other distractions. Now, this is easier said than done, especially for me, right? But this will help you stay on track and keep you from also getting overwhelmed. Now, as you're starting to put things into escrow, as you're starting to work with clients, it can be super overwhelming, okay? Uh, first of all, I think clients think as real estate agents that we know where every single house in the entire city is. No. We don't. And I get really overwhelmed when I show um, clients multiple properties because I'm like, ooh, I don't even know which way I'm supposed to go out of this driveway because I'm backing up, but my GPS doesn't know that I'm facing, like that I'm, I'm facing the house. And then like, if I go left, was I supposed to go right? And then I got to go around. It's overwhelming. Okay. Not to mention when you've showed multiple houses in a day to keep track of everything that you've seen in all the houses to be able to remember, okay, which one had this and which one had that. That can be overwhelming. Filling out contracts, writing an offer, submitting an offer, making sure that you are protecting your clients through that whole process. It's overwhelming. And guess what? If you're not focused on that task and avoiding all the other distractions that could come into play, well, it's... you. You just got to stay focused, okay? Now, does that mean that you don't take a break? Heck no. You need to take multiple breaks, all right? But try when you come back to the, to the desk, when you come back to the computer, when you come back to whatever task it was that you're doing, give that task your utmost attention, all right? Number five, probably I think the biggest part of setting and achieving goals is learn from your past mistakes. All right. And guys, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Every single person. I don't care how long you've been in the business. I don't care how many houses you've sold. I don't care anything. I don't care how old you are. It does not matter. You are human. You are going to make mistakes and you should not be afraid to make them because guess what happens every time you make a mistake? You learn from it. It's an opportunity for you to learn and to grow. So let me tell you a little story about me. All right. It was my very first transaction, and I was too excited, okay? So I had been working with uh, with this couple, and we were looking at multiple houses. We finally found the one. Like, they were in tears, and I was so happy for them. Now, my husband had been in real estate for a long time, and I learned a lot of things from him. And one of the things I learned was, you know what? You are a real estate agent. And as a real estate agent, there are other people in the, ind in the industry that will help you get from the time you're writing the contract to the time that you close, okay? And what I'm talking about is a transaction coordinator. Now, a transaction coordinator is your partner in the real estate transaction that handles deadlines, that handles paperwork, that makes sure that you're in compliance. Um, and honestly, it was what I needed, okay? Because it was really hard for me to manage all this and stay stay focused, all right? so. What had happened was I wrote up the offer, submitted the offer. Um, it was accepted. We were really excited to be moving forward. Um, I reached out to the transaction coordinator that was going to be my partner. And I was like, okay, here is the file. If you can just take care of this, that would be great. And I thought that's all I had to do. All right. No. No. I learned from my mistake because what had happened was... <laughs> I needed to be reaching out to the title company and I needed to make sure that, hey, guess what? Is everything okay? Is the HOA, is, is what is on the HOA, is that right? Um, are the people who are saying that they're selling the house, are those the actual people who are selling the house? Is there anything wrong 
with the HOA. And guess what? There was something wrong with the HOA. The person who was selling the house had actually made modifications to the front of the house. It wasn't approved by the HOA. And so they, the person who was selling the house had to fill out this form and say, hey, can I go ahead and make these changes even though they did already made the changes? Guys, it was like a whole thing, all right? But I'm thinking, oh, the transaction coordinator, she gonna handle this. No, that was not her job. It was my job, but I didn't know it was my job. And I had to learn from that mistake. Another thing, the lender, you need to reach out to the lender. I, I was told about once a week, every 10 days, send them an email. How are things going with the transaction? Remind them of your client's name just in case because they're probably not going to remember you from all the other real estate agents that they may be doing business with. So you want to make sure that they know who you're speaking about. And all you want to know is, are things still going in the right direction? Is everything on track? Okay, guys? So the reason why I'm telling you what you're supposed to be doing is because I did none of that. And my buyers almost ended up losing the house. Um, I almost got into a lot of trouble because I wasn't doing things that I needed to do. Now, was that a bad experience? Well, I, I don't want to say bad. It was difficult. It was very tough. It made me really second guess if I was good enough for this industry. But it also taught me so much because now I know it is my responsibility. Even if I pass off a task to someone, that does not mean that I do not follow up with them because guess what? We are all human. We all make mistakes. And so there has to be, and this is something else I'm going to put in here, but it's not, but you have to have open lines of communication with everyone involved in the transaction. Now, do you want to break um, fiduciary duties to your clients? Absolutely not. But you do need to make sure that the transaction is moving still at a steady pace, that things are still going along. All right. Now guys, with these tips, you will be on your way to setting and achieving extraordinary goals as a real estate agent. So I hope you gained some knowledge. I hope the tips that I shared were helpful. Hope you enjoyed the story a little bit. Ooh, that was rough, right? But let's just review the tips. Number one, create smart goals. Number two, break them down. Number three, celebrate your success. Right now, stop what you're doing. Seriously, people who are listening, stop what you're doing. Go walk to the mirror. Look at yourself and say, I star okay. you got up this morning you're listening to a podcast that's hopefully going to help you to generate more business you're listening to a podcast that's hopefully going to give you some tips and some tricks that are going to help you become better at your job generate more business be able to reach the goals that you're setting for yourself correct so celebrate your success four stay focused and five learn from your mistakes Guys, make sure that you rate and you share this podcast so others can find it more easily. Also, connect with me on Instagram. My handle is at Jackie Durbin AZ. And reach out with questions about getting licensed, if you have questions about gaining business, or maybe you have questions about, I don't know, taking your business up to the next level. You ready to start a team? Oh, I definitely want to help you do that. All right, guys, I hope that you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll see you next week on Teachers in Real Estate.